this hospital has been neglected over years. So there was evidence that you couldn't dispute. Uh, as, as I said, there was incontrovertible evidence to support some of the allegations that were made by uh, the honorable member. And the DA says it has sought the courts to prevent anticipated violence as part of the national shutdown. DA leader John Steenhuizen has today announced that they filed an urgent interdict at the Pretoria High Court to ensure the EFF's national shutdown planned for next Monday is peaceful. We have also resolved to press charges against the EFF and hold them personally liable for any damage done to persons, property, lives, livelihoods and infrastructure that has harmed or damage during this so-called shutdown. Meanwhile, EFF spokesperson Leanne Mateis has stressed there will not be any form of violence during these demonstrations. The Democratic Alliance has realized that the economic freedom fighters remain their only ideological enemy and it is a direct threat to their status as official opposition party here in South Africa. Gauteng will be partly cloudy tomorrow, both Joburg and Vereniging dropping to an overnight low of 13 degrees, peaking at 27, Pretoria 15 and 29. Lerato Huffler, Eyewitness News. Eyewitness News on 947. For more, click ewn.co.za. Hashtag MSW. You may begin to feel anxious or excited. Honest, deliberate, engaging, uncensored, censored. High dosage administration can cause adverse reactions. And most importantly, independent in mind. This is a normal response. Are you ready for our sports worldwide? Reaction Monday, what's on your mind? There's hope for Chelsea now. Chelsea. For me, I think you know you've been hurt so much, so you don't want to go fully in with your whole heart because you know like the air of disappointment is still lingering, so I don't want to do that. Same for Chiefs. I see we are winning, but I'm not fully there. Marawa Sports Worldwide. Proteus coach there, Shukri Conrad. You are where I said you will be many years <laughs> down the line. Back in what, 2003? Jesus, that's yeah. Cricket uh, World Cup 2003, uh, SMB Studios. Yeah, sounds about right. Proteas coach is where it should be and where you belong. Changing and re engineering sports on the continent and the world. Francis Gaito, who's a Kenyan football reporter, joins us on the line. Do you believe he deserves it? Uh, Gianni Infantino? Yeah. No, no, no. He doesn't, he doesn't deserve it. <laughs> he doesn't deserve it. Robert Marawa, live on 947. Vuma FM, Rise FM, and it's the beginning of a journey right here on 947 catching us live on YouTube channel. Now, a lot of people say, you know, this is the most fascinating thing because they get to listen and watch and comment at the same time. So go to the YouTube channel, uh, make the most of it. Let's get interactive. So much on the go uh, that we need to talk about here tonight. But let me remind you, you're also live on Vuma FM, Rise FM and on Sowetan Live. It's a big night. If you follow the beautiful game of football, when I say it's a beautiful night, it means this. I don't have to explain. Pep Guardiola has won nine major trophies at Manchester City, but the Spaniard says that his managerial era at the Premier League club will be defined by whether he delivers their first Champions League title. So Guardiola has won four Premier League titles, one FA Cup, four League Cups at City, but European success has eluded the manager who won the trophy twice as Barcelona manager. And with the English uh, club's best finish, 
runners up back in 2021. I'll absolutely be judged for that competition. Yeah, definitely. Because since the day one arrived here in the first game in Champions League, they asked me when Jazz arrived, landed here, sitting for the first time, and you are here to win the Champions League. I said, what? So I was manager for Real Madrid that this is not going to happen, but I could understand. But here, I don't know, but I accept it. So as much you go through, it's not going to change that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, r- r- really important. It is. This not just for the, it will be a bad international break for the guys who don't go to with the national team is for the fact to be alive you know for the last two months of the season two months and a half be alive so as much you can extend this chance to be there in the competitions to have the pleasure to still in Europe or in the Premier League to try to be close to Arsenal so it will be good different managed long time ago so I don't pay any attention about what happened there so the first half we were better the second half they were better we saw the game we tried to figure out what we're going to do and try to to, to adjust a few things that maybe can help us to have more control and play a little bit better. Well, the Manchester City midfielder Kevin De Bruyne says that they cannot complain about Erling Haaland's uh, output this season, although he admitted that the Norwegian may have been a little bit more prolific earlier in the campaign. Haaland has taken the Premier League by storm this season, scoring 28 goals in 26 games, but his rate has slowed down a little bit, scoring just three in his last nine appearances. Haaland also netted six times against Leipzig in his career. So De Bruyne believes, though, that teams are more organized in the second half of the season and maybe having an impact on Holland's goal tally. People are maybe more anticipating to, to his runs as other teams but I feel always there's always a first part of the season and a second part. I feel in the second part there's a lot more going on. Teams are more well organized. Um, they play for more also from both sides of, of uh, the table so uh, I feel people are more prepared for, uh, in every every sense in the way and maybe it was also a little bit more pro- when he got the chances but I don't think we need to complain about the output of, of Erling in, in any way so um, I think he's fine you know I think if we if if we see the Crystal Palace game he had maybe two three chances got to score two I don't think that there's any issue but obviously people are always um, anticipating him to score two three goals where probably his average is a, a game a goal, uh, goal a game so yeah seems seems fine for me I think we've played them now three times in the last two two years already and I think we already know what kind of team it is it's a high en- energy high quality intensive team and you know they have that um, that Red Bull DNA where they play a lot of players in the middle they're very aggressive they, they know how to make it a tough game and I I think they have a lot of quality. I think it's been fine this year. I think um, the league has changed a bit. I, I feel like the lower lower teams in the in the classman they 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 are able to spend more money and buy more quality players. So I feel like all 20 teams have so much quality. So I think the the level of difficulty of beating all these teams is is uh, getting tougher and tougher. Well, I'm, that's not what I said. I'm an old man in this game. I'm not an old man. Um, I'm sorry with you guys, but I feel pretty young in this this area. So, you know, no offense. Yeah, good to hear the jokes there at the end. Kevin De Bruyne, hoping to bounce back to full fitness as well. Well, I guess for years now, we've all known that there's no Super Sports United without the Lucas Moripa Stadium. It's uh, pretty much their happy hunting home ground. And the thought of them playing their home games elsewhere is unimaginable. But they'll now have to look for another home because the Premier Soccer League has banned the Antrimville Stadium from hosting games because it does not meet the standards. All right, this is not said by me. Let me go to the COO at the National Premier Soccer League, uh, Professor Ronnie Schloss, who joins me on the line. Prof, thank you so much for your time. Good evening. Good evening. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, thanks. And you, Robert? Very, very good. Haven't spoken to you in a while. And uh, it usually takes these situations where a team stadia is no longer fit for football. Yeah. And this is where we are right now. What's wrong with Lucas Moripa yeah. Stadium? It's, put it this, this way. One of the most important things from the league's point of view is the safety and security of its supporters, the spectators who go to the stadium, the people who spend their forty rand, and one of the and, and we adhere to various government acts. There's the safety and security at sports venues, 
the, the South African national standards, and then we have the PSL own, its own requirements. And all stadiums must meet those minimum requirements. Now, let me give, give you an example. We have a situation at, at Lucas where we can get, say, 27,000 people in a confined space. And what happens if we have load shedding, we don't have any backup power whatsoever, whether it's generators or whatever, to assist people to get out. People are going to get mugged. They're going to get injured falling down the stairs and so on. We had a, a situation at one of the stadiums in, in Tony the other day where the, the players had to change using t- um, candles. So, <laughs> so all of this is totally unacceptable. So we looked at what the requirements were in terms of the Act. And the Act specifically says that every stadium should have a generator and it should have temporary, uh, a means of supplying temporary power to the change rooms, the VIP areas, the exits, the entry points in the event of power failure. And just on that basis, the stadium was purely deficient. At what stage, though, Prof, did you realize that it was deficient? Because it, it's not like the season's just started. Super Sports United have been able to play their home games. They, in fact, they only left with three home games this season. Yeah. But, uh, we, what we, you know, we, 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 we were promised certain things were going to be fixed, etc., etc., and, 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 and nothing happened. And um, then... On off chance, I was watching a game and watching the floodlights, and half of them weren't working. Uh, from a viewership point of view, it detracts from the game, um, makes it very difficult for the people televising the game, and so on. Let, the, the, the lighting is one aspect. There are various other aspects that one has to consider, and that is the structural integrity of the structures, the grandstands, etc. And there are certain problems, especially in, I think it's the south east corner, where the, the stairs have collapsed. Um, we have a problem on the main grandstand at the top of the country box, where the whole front, the shop front, or whatever you want to call it, has moved and I haven't been able to test it, could be due to movement in the structure itself, could be settlement or whatever. But we can't have a situation of people sitting in any of those areas and something's going to fall down on them. And then we, the, the, the turns, certain turnstiles weren't working. We had a problem of a gate that hadn't been fixed for six months, an entry point. But, um, but would, would you not say, though, that maybe somehow, somewhere, the PSL itself delayed in taking action as opposed to waiting now until almost the end of the season, having allowed, as you say, these promises that they they promised to deliver not to be delivered, and now it's almost like knee-jerk reaction. Let's crack the whip. Let's not allow them to play at the stadium because now these things have become so amplified. No, I wouldn't say it's an easy reach. Um, from the point of view of that, if you go through all the correspondence, and the, the stadium was informed all the time of these problems. It did rectify things at, at certain intervals, but again, when it was done, it was, was, was done on, on, on a haphazard basis. So there was an act of good faith from the PSL to say, okay, we see you working on it, but let's not be too hard. We've only got one major stadium uh, other than Loftus in, in Swanee. Um, let's try and see what we can do. And also we, we looked at the games to be played and there was a, uh, we, we knew that we wouldn't get uh, full houses for the last, say, six or eight games. So uh, that was also taken into account. I still think what the risk factor is. to draw the line and to say, look, 
municipality, you haven't come to the party. We as the PSL carry 1.5 billion rand public liability. And one of the requirements of that public liability is that every stadium has to be signed off by some, a competent person appointed by the league, which is me. Mm-hmm. And in addition, must have a municipality. Com- I, I, I reached a stage where uh, I, I said, well, look, I'm, I'm not going to pre- prepare to put my name to, to a certificate and until certain work is carried out. Because I'm not going to expose myself to various risks. Yeah, I understand that, Prof. Now, they've got three home games. They've got to play Amazulu on the 23rd of April. They've got to play Stellenbosch on the 2nd of May. They've got a game against Kaiser Chiefs on the 13th. So whose liability does it become uh, then to shift this team from their home ground to take them to another ground and who bears the costs and where will they be playing? Well, that's up to the home team to uh, negotiate with, with various other stadiums. I know that they're busy with that. And, um, and I think the Supersport themselves appreciate the situation. Let me give you another example. We've had all this rain just recently. <laughs> the re- you couldn't use some of the change rooms because the water was just pouring in. The, the waterproofing had failed. You had a situation where the, re- the referees had to change in the corridors. But would, would that not have been the case even when the season started? Surely it didn't take so many games into the season to realize that when it rains, it leaks. The change rooms no, get flooded. But, but it, it builds up. We had a, a lot of heavy rain in the last couple of months, if you take it say, from where was it November, possibly December. And um, we, we had to look at these things. And, and, and you know, we, we've got to be practical. We, we're supposed to be a professional organization. And if the, the local authority is not maintaining something, we've got to instruct the team that uses that facility that they've got to find another facility. And we've done the same. And, and, and me, you know, if you look at Richards Bay, we we closed Richards Bay down. We've closed the uh, in East London. So, so, uh, Ramabudu so, Stadium. Uh, yeah. There you go. And we've closed down the border rugby stadium in the We've closed on very stadium, seven in Epilene. You, you know where one day, Prof, I think when, when, when we do get you into the studio, I would love to have a chat, is that when we would watch uh, Richards Bay play in the lower division, Pack Stadium, yeah. at the very same yeah. stadium that when they get promoted, they're no longer allowed to play in. I'm saying it's the same human lives who would have been affected while they were playing in the lower division that still get affected when they're playing in the Premier division. So what is the difference? When do you make a call? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But let me reserve that for that particular day when we do have it. Um, but thank you for the confirmation. I think that's literally a lot of the uh, supporters of the club who wanted to know what was going on. Uh, but now that they do know, truly appreciate it, Prof. And hopefully we'll be able to chat again soon. Yeah, but, uh, I just want one for um, I think in our, our speakers, that the interests of the spectators, the players, the officials, is paramount. Right. And especially in, in the era that we're in now, with shedding and things like that, we need to meet the minimum requirements to lie down. Makes perfect you sense to me. a stadium doesn't have a generator, which is basic. Yeah, yeah. Prof, thank you so much indeed. CEO of the National Premier Soccer League, uh, Professor Ronnie Schloss, joining me right here on the line uh, to talk about that. Maybe you can give me a reaction as far as that is concerned. 0607080484. 0607080484. Marawa Sports Worldwide Live. In three, two, one. On 947, Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW. 
Welcome to Free Apps of Rewards, where you get that month-end feeling every day. We've paid out over 5 billion rand in real cash. Not a member yet? Move to APSA today and you could earn your monthly banking fees back in cash. Zero membership fees, no counting points, just real cash back. I can with APSA. Now that's Africanacity. Open your transactional account and sign up for EBSA Rewards today. Hashtag more free EBSA Rewards. EBSA is an authorized financial services and a registered credit provider. TNC apply. Do you just want to shout? Because the power went out. And the washing's not done. And supper hasn't even begun. High shame. South Africa, you need a reason to smile. So get smiling with these deals from Spa. Spa selected chicken in a bag, no giblets, $49.99 per kg. Spa extra large eggs, 30s, $59.99 per tray. Valid until 19 March while stocks last. Teas and C's apply. Spa, where for smiles. What are the pros of betting on Lotto Star? We offer the highest guaranteed payouts in the country. You can bet on our major international lotteries, quick games, real rush games, live games, and the real jackpot race. It's 100% legal. You can bet anywhere, anytime, 24-7. How lucky can you get? Go to lottostar.co.za, your world of live games. Lotto Star is licensed by the Mpumalanga Economic Regulator. No under 18s. National Responsible Gambling Program. 0800 006 008. T's and C's apply. All games are fixed on betting events. For over 28 years, South Africans have trusted Postnet Courier with their parcels and documents. That's a lot of delivering, and because practice makes perfect, we've become very good at it. Over time, we've continued to go the proverbial extra mile, or 1.6 kilometers, to extend our, and hence, your reach. Today, you can choose between Postnet to Door, Postnet to Postnet, or Postnet International. And with over 450 stores nationwide, you'll find our services right up your street. For more, visit postnet.co.za. Sage gives businesses like Brian Habana's access to the right insights at the right time, reducing complexity and enabling compliance. The quicker you can make a decision by the information through which you receive that, the quicker that decision making comes. Become a Sage customer like Brian and set up your business for success. Visit tax.sage.co.za today. Sage, helping business flow. Yada yada and insurance is like a park town prawn somewhere in your bedroom. Don't get yada yada. Get car plus pothole plus phone cover from 499 per month. Search dial direct. A licensed non-life insurer and FSP premiums are profile dependent and reviewable. T's and C's online. Whew. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. Pro Tears coach there, Shukri Conrad, uh, chatting to us right here at Marawa Sports Worldwide. And I think when you made a decision around Temba Bavuma, the captaincy, how difficult a choice was that? Yeah! All the choices I had to make is probably the easiest. He is an unbelievable human being. He's an unbelievable leader. He's a hell of a cricketer, cricketer to boot as well. What, what do you think is the biggest misconception around our captain? That he's not worth his place in the side. <laughs> I think they, they, they're quick to um, also confuse formats that he wasn't worth his place in the side. You know, I think he's been our, our best best player in the last couple of years. Hashtag MSW. Marawa Sports Worldwide. This is 947. Music Life. Hashtag MSW. Live on YouTube on the YouTube channel. 947 Joburg is your destination. If you want to watch, listen and comment, it is as simple as that. It makes the world a better place. Otherwise, if you're listening to us, it's a 947. You're listening as well across the country, the continent and the world. It is Rise FM, Vuma FM and of course, Sowetan Live. Later on, I'll tell you about on this day in history, what exactly transpired the 14th of March. Do you want to hazard a guess? 1971, something big happened. Let me give you a clue. If you're a boxing fan, 
This one's for you. But one thing I can tell you, maybe you might look like a boxer. Uh, maybe you walked into the studio, you might have just intimidated me slightly. But nah, Curry Cup as well as Lions have not been the greatest of bedfellows in recent years. The Joburg side struggling to make an impact in the tournament. That guy who sits right here. I mean, he bore the brunt of those failures last year. With the Joburgers suffering a tormented campaign. Uh, with only, what, 17% of the win record. A highly respected gaffer as well. Uh, many believe that the coach has a long and illustrious career ahead of him in the coaching box. We certainly believe that as well. And I suppose that he will want to bounce back immediately. Reclaim that crown. Uh, let's let him answer that question. Mziwa Kengos, Lions Curry Cup coach, joining me live in studio. Coach, good to see you. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you for the invite. And uh, good, uh, good evening to all the listeners out there. Uh, it's certainly a pleasure to be here. Feels good to be in red, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm glad you're wearing the right colors. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I had to. And I, I had to abide because this is where we are. And you've got a, a line as well. If, if you had to describe, let's say, the past... Let me make it past two years of just positionally where you are, where you've wanted to be, and what do you find happening in front of you? Yeah, I think the last 24 months, Rob, I um, read something funny today on, on Twitter. Yeah. And it said... Um, you are today where you are and five years ago this is where you prayed or you know that you'd be yeah um the last 24 months have been certainly a roller coaster um two years ago we just won we just gone and one of three teams in the history of junior curry cups um we just gone i just led a team um to the title having been unbeaten um with that the euphoria of being appointed the the head coach of the curry cup which is obviously a massive privilege. But that would have been that would have been huge. I mean, in, in, in your C V, in your in your learnership, in everything that you studied in terms of coaching, everything yeah. that you put in in terms of the work, being a curry cup coach is a big deal. Yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a hell of a it's a hell of an appointment if yeah. you, you know if you if you put it into context that then I just led the under twenties to to a, a junior title unbeaten, like I said, one of three teams. Sure, I'd been previously an assistant coach um, in the Curry Cups in the Curry Cup team to, to the current head coach at the moment of the URC, um, Ivan van Royen. and then obviously that appointment, you know, came along and and like I said, the the, the excitement. Yeah. Um, and, and and one never, you don't know how soon those type of appointments will come through, in particular at a senior level from a first class point of view. Um. Would and you say you expected it, though? W w was it something that was lingering in the back of your mind to say, any day now, I've done enough, I've proven myself enough, it could happen? Well, you always hope it can happen. Yeah. You, you know, but you and I earlier offline were, were speaking about the business of rugby and sure. rugby business. Um, so the one thing that is not guaranteed is sport in, is, is those type of things. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, re really excited and and. And I don't want to say expectant, but you know it's something that you work towards. Um, I'd been an assistant for for quite a while, and yeah. you know tried to position myself as a, as a head coach, as a mm. as someone who leads teams and organisations. Um, so that probably came a bit sooner than what I expected. But you know those are the type of opportunities that are difficult to say no to. But mentally, how, how do you prepare? Because you know the weight of expectation, you know the culture, you know the history. You know, Ellis Park, you know what's expected. And, I mean, was it Elton? Yeah. When Elton single-handedly won the Curry Cup, I remember being at Ellis Park, watching that game, and he kicked a game of his life. But people probably didn't expect it to happen at that stage, but it did, and it gave them the just rewards. And all of a sudden, the following season, the turnout at Ellis Park was something completely different because now there was a sense of belief that they bounce back, that they can win. W was that something maybe that you thought back to, to say, Azumzi, 
I want to bring that culture back. I want to make the Lions fans one in victory, in success, but also be consistent. Yeah, Rob, I think I'm I'm born and bred in Joburg from a, in, yeah. in terms of I've coached at every level at 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 the Lions. Um, I've coached at the 13 level. I won a Grand Como. I went to a final of a Craven Week. Won a Craven Week. Yeah. I'm um, coaching a 19, coaching a 21, won those competitions. So what I'm trying to show is that um, I was th- when those when that success that you speak about was happening, you know I'd obviously seen it. Yeah. And and I mean without stating the obvious, my blood is red. Yes. <laughs> it has to be. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll question your presence here tonight. Yes. And um, so obviously, one has belief in that mm. y- we want to return. Um, we want to return our franchise and our union to the to that type of success and and fill up Ellis Park again. Um, and I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have accepted the job if I hadn't believed or hadn't had the confidence in myself um, to at the very least go a long way into achieving that. Yeah, but would you say it's? I mean, you come in now account year three, but it's also a union in transition. So w- what are some of the difficulties when you come in within a union that is in transition, but people still expect results? Yes, I mean, you know that in, in, in many sports and perhaps in, in all sports, yeah. from a professional point of view, winning is the currency. And very few people want to hear that there's transition. Yeah. It's a building period. Um, you know, there's there was COVID and COVID affected, um, you know, Teams and, and institutions differently. You know, I look at the Stormers. Um, just two years ago, they they were almost on the brink of couldn't pay salaries. Yeah. And before you know it, you know they they undeniable the rugby dominance. champions. Precisely. Yeah. yeah. You know, two years ago they'd lost Sia Kolisi, um, Bongin Bonambi, Peter Steff to Toy. Yeah. So you know, but no one wants to hear that. And and we went through a similar thing, but we oh. probably went went through an IP loss. You know, if I look at Johan Ackerman, who achieved an incredible success there. Right. Um, Swester Brain, who took over for him, from him. Um, the the head to the throne, sort of, in, in guys like Bafana and Tleko, who is now the junior Springbok. Um, Jerry Mongalo is now the head coach at the Sharks. So all that happened is we, we had a vacuum of guys who'd spent an incredibly long time at the Lions. I'm talking mm-hmm. about guys who spent 10 years there. So guys who bled and were the, were the soul and life of that organization. Um and apart from players losing Malcolm Marx, the retirement of Warren Whiteley, yeah. the departure of Ron Combrink, um, Elton Yankees' departure. So that IP loss from a managerial and personnel point yeah. of view, couple that with COVID and, 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 and Tyron Green and those guys leaving to overseas, yeah. that puts you in an incredibly precarious situation. But then what does that teach you, though? Because when, when you use that example, and it's a perfect example of the Stormers, their transition their loss of personnel in fact their loss of superstars because that's literally what they had yeah they had the exodus of those superstars in any other franchise that is a crisis in any other franchise it's a case of how long will it take for us to plug that gap but for the stormers the fact that they were just ably managing to move on but also to become better what has that taught you as a coach to say what about their planning? What about the juniors? What about uh, you know whether it's academy players, players that they have s- scouted for so many years? What has been that real life lesson for you? Because we're talking about a living example of a franchise that didn't collapse as a result of their superstars leaving. I think the biggest lesson there is succession planning. Yeah, from a coaching perspective. So you, th- there's nothing wrong. Whilst rugby still perhaps. Um, operates in the dark ages. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know, you look at Mikhail Ateta and, 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 and Pep. Yeah. Pep knew, you know, early days that Mikhail had ambitions to be a manager and a head coach and he created an enabling yeah. environment for him, as an example. Yeah. And, but also for... But he was happy to let him go and 100%. say, go do what you want to do. Yeah. You know, I think, uh, I was reading Sir Alex Ferguson's book, he created, he, at, at one stage he was coaching against six or seven of Garzue's former assistant coaches. Yeah. And, and, and that... That's what I mean by if if an enabling environment can yeah. create people who can lead and 
then we can't absorb, we can give it to other people. But that's, that's trust, though. Yes. I mean, trust comes a long way, at, and I'm glad. I mean, you mix it up beautifully, because when you, when you use the example of uh, Sir Alec Ferguson, it's about trust. So when he loses the Carlos Kirosh, who goes to Real Madrid, he doesn't plug the gap that's left by Carlos Kirosh to say, I want another assistant. He says, I'm going to keep that open because I don't think he's going to last at Real Madrid. Yes. And he didn't last. Or, and so what or for happened Portugal. Then, or for yeah. Where? And then he came back straight into that position that he had left then. You've got an able team around you. How important is that trust that you have built with your technical team? Yeah, I do. I've, I've got the fortune of having a, a, a guy called Vessel Ru, former Springbok, um, played 100 games for the Blue Bulls. Yeah. Um, Coached at the Blue Bulls, won many a, a title there, who's my assistant coach. And a guy called Vernon Ellis, who's my assistant coach. And Philip is there still? And, yeah. No, Philip's, Philip's has, has subsequently departed. Okay, yeah. okay. But we, we've we worked together for for the better part of five, six years. And, and like you spoke about the word trust. Yeah. You know, I trust him implicitly, explicitly with whatever. We, we don't even have to, you know, discuss some things. You know, and, and that type of trust leads to the type of success we've had from a junior perspective. And and our challenge is that how do we reinvent us reinvent ourselves and replicate that at a senior level? Obviously it, it's a whole puzzle. It's mm. it's a whole lot more complex than mm. just arriving in a team and saying, Hey guys, we're gonna win. But do you have a nucleus? I mean you gotta as a CEO, if, if I had a Rudolf Stroyli, I look at a guy with a, a track record of being great himself. So he's transforming what he had on the field to what he now puts in executive decision making, planning, plotting, future. What are your conversations like with him? And uh, what's the biggest bugbear? I mean, if you walk into the office and ah, there's MZ again, I know what he wants. What is that? The, we're fortunate that we've, we're fortunate and unfortunate. Fortunate that we've got a, a rugby loving CEO, so he's not a businessman. Yeah. He, he's a guy who's been a coach, he's been an administrator, who now finds himself in a CEO position. So from that point of view, he's a guy who can sympathize with you and say, listen, I understand why you're not making that selection. I can see where you're heading there. You can yeah. have you know, those type of conversation. The, the, the bugbear that we've all got, and I think this is, a, this is a common theme amongst everyone, is that we need resources. Resources being playing resources. Yeah. You, you know, we've we got to attract... Um, we're going to attract quality players to, to Joburg and we're going to attract Springboks to Joburg. We've got to create Springboks so that we can attract Springboks. Um, you know, I think the Sharks are a, are a good example is that they created Springboks and then created an environment then they can attract Springboks. But it, there's it, also greater investment when you look at the Sharks. You know, you're looking at an investment that even starts off in the United States of America. You have a Sharks that even says, oh, not only that, we bring Rock Nation on board. Uh, not only that, we, you do so many different things that have not been done because the experiment, their CEO, who has done, for me, he did a PhD yeah. in transformation. He did something that a lot of people don't actually understand. When they look at that lineup at the Sharks, it is not by mistake. It's not by coincidence. It is something that has been thought out and thought through very, very, very carefully. And I'll get your thoughts about that because you yourself, you stand in a very unique situation where you're a hero to many. Um, and people look up to you right now. So that added onto the weight of expectation as far as results are concerned uh, should be an interesting one to uh, to get to know. All right, be part of the conversation. We are having Umziwa Kengosi, who is the Curry Cup coach of the Lions. Send us your WhatsApp voice notes. Otherwise, be in touch. 11 Marawa Sports Worldwide Live. On 947. Vuma FM. Rise FM. And Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW.
We've all heard of injury time, added time, and extra time, but poor Chris has hit extra, extra time. While his girlfriend tries on everything in the store, he's been stuck outside the change rooms. But look, Utemaniginigi is checking Betway Bulb. With Betway Bulb, he's got access to the stats he'll need to place his bet on tonight's game, all right on his phone. There's no better way to burn down the clock. Another feature, another gem. Hala, la. It helps to be switched on with Betway Bulb. Licensed and regulated by the Western Cape Gambling and Racing Board. No persons under the age of 18 years are permitted to gamble. For gambling counseling, call SARGF on 0800 006 008 or WhatsApp 076 0710. Curious about the potential of electric vehicles and want to experience one? Discover all that tomorrow has to offer in a fully electric Audi e-tron of your choice. Delivered to your home for an extended test drive experience. Choose an experience that suits your vision of the future and prepare to be inspired by the marvels of tomorrow. Register at progress.audi.co.za for a chance to discover what living electric is all about. T's and C's apply. Your future awaits. Audi. Vorsprung durch Technik. This tier pricing. It leaves you in tears. Shame. Why stay? I switched my salary and debit orders to Capitec. And Mina, I get rewarded with cash back on the 10th of every month. You lecker. Two paydays for you, unlike my bank. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm living my best life with South Africa's best digital bank. Here's the secret. Yeah. You can switch your debit orders on WhatsApp. <gasps> really? Mm -hmm. It's quick and easy. Wow. Switch and live better with Capitec. DCI John Luther, you're a disgrace to the department. Your reckless, violent and obsessive ways are the reason you're behind bars. Now you have a chance to clear your name. Are you finally ready to talk, Luther? Luther! The wait is finally over. Idris Elba returns as London's most infamous detective in the most anticipated action-packed film of the year, Luther, The Fallen Son, streaming 10th of March exclusively on Netflix. In a world that demands you always have more. Would you like to upsize your meal, sir? More side servings, more garnish, more toppings, added dessert, thicker cuts, man-sized cuts, onion rings you never wanted. Starters to go with your starters. In this ad one plus one, is that all for now, world? There's one pie, packed with mouth-watering meat from corner to corner. And all you need is one. The Big Deal Pie from Pyman's. Yada yada and insurance is like a parkland prawn somewhere in your bedroom. Don't get yada yada. Get car plus pothole plus phone cover from 499 per month. Search dial direct. A licensed non-life insurer and FSP premiums are profile dependent and reviewable. T's and C's online. Whew. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. Frontiers coach there, Shukri Conrad. You are where I said you will be many years down the line. <laughs> Back in what, 2003? She said that, yeah. The Cricket World Cup 2003, uh, SMB Studios. Yeah, sounds about right. Frontiers coach is where it should be and where you belong. I never got a chance to congratulate you. So this, on an open platform, on a public platform, I say congratulations. Robert, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, he's indeed an honor. And yeah, you were, you were a very good pupil as well. So you made my job easy. I don't know, how, how close do you think we are to winning a Cricket World Cup right now? If it's not going to happen now, it probably will never, but I think we're getting closer all the while. We've got all, this, all the skills, we've got the personnel. Yeah, there's no reason why we, we shouldn't be going to World Cups as favourites, you know. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Marawa Sports Worldwide on 947. Monday to Friday from 6 to 7 p.m. Hashtag MSW. Sign that you can send us your WhatsApp voice notes, any questions or comments. You've been following the Curry Cup, you've been following the plights of the Lions. 060-708-0484, 060-708-0484. Otherwise, you can dial directly into studio. 011-8838-947, uh, You can call us through and, uh, yeah, chat directly to the coach. As he says... He's on a mission. He's on a building mission. And before I ask my next question to him, let me go to Josh. Josh is in Alberton. Josh, good evening. 
Hi, uh, good day, uh, Robert. How are you? I'm very, very good. You want to chat to the coach? Uh, yes, Mr. Nkosi, how are you doing? Good, man. You actually, you were you coached my younger cousin at Kez. Who would uh, your cousin be, sir? Coach, uh, Caleb O'Donoghue. Yes, yes, he's in the United States now. Yeah, yeah, he's playing currently for Lindenwood University. Um, coach, I wanted to find out by you. Uh, obviously, we saw the the hiding that the Blue Bulls got on Saturday oh. uh, against the Pumas. Pumas. How, how do the Lions... You as, as as management and and the players, how were you preparing for those types of games? Yeah, look, the the, the one thing um, teams like the Pumas, Greek was um, cheaters to a certain degree. That what they've got is the benefit of continuity. Um, Lions, Bulls, um, Sharks, Western Province. Our challenge is that we've got two concurrent competitions that are happening. So if you have a look yeah. at um, Western Province, you know, they've gone for a different model. Um, the, the Sharks on the weekend, um, they won, but I don't know how impressive they were, is that we're servicing the URC teams. Mm. So, you know, we've got to serve them. To, you know, so we're running two concurrent competitions and, two, and we're serving two concurrent um, purposes. So we've got to look after the URC team. As an example, I've, I've got one, one or two guys who I've got to give game time to this weekend. Um, and obviously that affects cohesion. You know, that yes, affects... Yes. Uh, all sorts of things. If you look at the Bulls, they had Mapu, Stain, um, Cornell Hendricks, Spoon Corsi. But that's what you say. Those are bad players. I mean, they're double-digit Springboks. But cohesion, obviously, in a sport like rugby, is a hell of importance. So I was just to fight for cohesion so that we can give ourselves a fighting chance um, given the timing of the Curry Cup. 100%. 100%. Tell me, Josh, though, in, in terms of the young man moving to the U.S., what does that inform by? That was that was purely based on um, look. Obviously, I don't want to I don't want to speak for him. His dad's a lot more passionate about it. My yeah, cousin. sure. Um, but but the biggest thing was uh, exposure. Exposure to to a different league. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't he wasn't contracted into to one of our unions. Uh, so they they got the opportunity through through friends of theirs. Um, who also went over subsequently with Caleb Rees Buerta. Yeah. Um, they they got the opportunity to go to go further their studies and get bigger exposure in, in the US. It's sad. I mean I mean uh, Caleb's one of Caleb's dreams was to play for the Lions. But, you know, unfortunately things don't work out that way and he's learned a hell of a lot more in the US than, than I feel that he might have learned yeah. And obviously, you know the, the the history, Josh, of rugby in South Africa, and what we yes. do when it comes to exporting a lot of our players. And yes. yeah, I mean, it, it is a pity. I just thought I'd ask uh, because it, it's always quite interesting to find out what causes or results in players having to make that move because it is a big move. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Yeah, uh, Mr. Maraba, if you if if you do want to delve into that, um, I'm sure I'm sure Donovan Odadi, you would would take this conversation a lot further. but I would love that. Uh, yeah, no, look, it's, it's Donovan's a phenomenal, phenomenal dad, and his biggest yeah. thing was just getting his son to, to experience that, you know, to, to experience a whole different life. I mean, his rugby, as a, as a first year, he was, he was put straight into to the first team, essentially. And for him, it's, it's, it's sad not having his son yet, but what his son's learned over there, I, I think for him would outweigh him not having his son yet. Josh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you on hold um, just so that we can grab the number. I would love to chat to Donovan. Yeah, no, definitely. All right, cool. Don't, don't drop the line, okay? No, I promise I won't. All right, nice one. Thank you so, so yes, much indeed. You, All right, that's a Josh uh, coming through. You know, those are the kind of calls that one enjoys. I'll come back to the pubers. I'll come back to the dominance. I haven't seen in a long time flair, enjoyment of the game, and literally making the bulls look like they were not the bulls. Smosiso's down in Durban. Smoo, good evening. Hi, how are you, Rob? I'm good, good, good. Coaches, yeah, go ahead. You want to chat about the connection between the Springboks and the Curry Cup work? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, greetings, coach. Hope you're good. I can't complain, sir. 
Uh, thank you so much. Coach, you know, I wanted to touch base with the point that you mentioned, that uh, with uh, the plans that the union has, that you want to develop Springboks and also uh, have your own Springboks and then attract Springboks. So I just wanted to find out the connection. Like, is there a feeding system that you guys have with the Springboks? Because uh, when it comes to rugby, one is not really familiar with the, with the planning, how it goes. Because for for football, we know with the coach, he wanted to meet with the different coaches, although it never happened, but it was part of his plan. So when it comes to the unions and the Springbok, what is the plan? What is the setup? I'm sorry to put you on the spot. It's just that I found it interesting because that's uh, one point that you mentioned. Yeah, nice one. Thanks so much. We'll ask you to listen on the radio. Um, yeah. Spusi, so um, we have the fortune of having an incredibly organized um, director of rugby in, in Rusty Erasmus um, and probably the most analytical uh, coaches in, in the world yeah. in, in Jock Nienaba. And I think rugby is, or rugby in South Africa is fortunate in that they, they've got a, a tracking system. They, they, they've got union visits, franchise visits, all the way down to junior Springbok level. As an example, we had Bafan and Tlek on the weekend um, having an alignment camp for the 20s and you know, two week, for the last two weeks, the Springboks have been in line, alignment camps. Cape Town, yeah. Yeah. And and we're, as, as unions and franchises, we're kept abreast. They will do franchise visits and give us report backs on what they think of Ron Dreher or Jordan Hendricks and where he's tracking and where he ranks. So we're well aware of what they're looking for. And and they, they don't temper with our game plans and the way we want to play, but just purely on position specifics, the, the players' fundamentals, and the way they see him and where they see him in however long the period is. So the one thing that we can we cannot fault our, mm. y- y- you know, SA Rugby on is, is the manner in which they track players, is the manner in which we get information fed to us and the manner in which um, the information is dispersed amongst us. So we are always aware at who they're looking at and, and who they're not and, and whatever the case is. So the onus is then up to us as franchises is to coach and technically make our players better so as to get onto the radar of the Springbok coaches and that in that way they'll become Springboks. A lot of people say that the game's become too technical. It's become too controlled by the the stats, the figures. How many kilometers have you run? How much ground have you covered? All of these things. Do you think that's to the detriment or the improvement of the game? I think it's I think there's a balance. I mean if you if you look at what Fran- how France played against England on the weekend, yeah. I mean there's there's structure, there's flair, there's you know, there's playing in the moment but there's also the tight stuff the malls and stuff and all that stuff is really technical um so i guess as a coach it's about finding the balance um you know you let's use you soccer as an example you look look at liverpool part of that press and part of him playing high that's technical but yeah. you know part of their former players who've now, who've now departed they brought the flair they brought the the off the cuff stuff so i think from from a coaching perspective and from the game you know, you've got to work out as a coach what your what your philosophy is and and how you you see the game and, and and do you want to entertain or do you want to win and can you do both at the same time? Yeah, talk about doing both. Uh, we also take your calls by the way. Oh one one double eight three eight nine four seven. Your WhatsApp voice notes. The struggles. And as a black coach, who is now propelled into the highest level of coaching in South Africa. What are some of the difficulties and what are still some of the existing difficulties that a person like Humzi would have in breaking through? I mean, you've got a great past, a great history to talk of. You've got a learnership to talk of. You, you've not just said, hey, I'm presenting my blackness, therefore give me a chance. No, you've done the courses. So you qualified over and above everything else. But what are the biggest struggles? I think... You know, at the top of my mind, I, I think of two, Rob. I think of number one, opportunity. Um, opportunity in that you, you need organizations to trust you. I've been fortunate enough to have an organization that does trust me. You know, that, that's the first thing. I think then the other one is probably a personal one and, and, and one that's got involved with feeling yeah. is often we're, we're the only black or we're the only black people or coaches in organizations. I look at, um, you know, Edgar, the Bulls. You know, I look at myself at the Lions for, for a while. Um, Jay Mungala at the Sharks, probably him and Pierre Lomo. So there's very few of us. I look at Rito Tlungwane at, at at the Stormers. So I think, and, and, and that's because of a whole variety of factors. What I'm saying is, so, you know, one's got to, 
even and again convince themselves that you deserve to be there. You're not there on on the on the basis of your skin color and that and that you've done your time on the grass and and you deserve to be there, just mm. like your your colleagues and, and your contemporaries. Mm. No, 100%. Uh, I just think those days are done. We, we had a chat last week with the Minister of Sport, newly appointed, just to get his thoughts about what he thinks, about a lot of things. I mean, was there ever going to be a, an in-depth discussion? But for you, I mean, I, I look at teams, they normally settle after three-year cycles. Would you say, is your team now, after a three-year cycle almost, ready to compete at a level where we were using the pupas as an example and how exciting they are and how you can see you can see how well they've been coached and it transfers onto the field. How far do you think you are? Look, Rob, without blowing smoke up our own, yeah. you know, we, we, we've had for the last three years probably the most successful junior system. You know, we're sitting with the URC team that's, you know, sort of 23, 24 with a couple of experienced guys yeah. who are just on the cross. I'm talking about Jordan Hendricks, uh, the Ruan Fenters, um, you know, the Darren Landsberg and the Nord Nachos and those guys for, for those people who know I'm talking about. So for, they're at that level now and, and I use the Storm as an example where they where Mani Lubok was two years ago, where Clayton Blomichis was two years ago. I'm talking about the Stormers now. Yeah. So ours is just to get those guys to not click on because they've, they, Frank, the Franco Horns are sitting on 25 slash 30 first class caps so they, they've done their time now and now's their time to to kick on so i think and we're confident that in the, in the next season or two um you, you know having experienced the rigors of of playing against northern hemisphere teams yeah and um, we've broken the our sort of voodoo against south african teams i think that's given us a hell of a, hell of a lot of confidence and that's evident in training uh, but also the availability of the erc players has made a big difference because I remember the frustration when they were not available. Yeah, we, we we've had to we, after last last year's season, we've had to um, have a look at our at our model and, and yeah. which how we're going to implement them. And, and you know, it doesn't help. We've got uh, players who are available but aren't available to play for the franchise. Sure. Are you ready for racing ninety two? Yeah, I think I, I think it's exciting. How can we not be? Sure. Um, that that's crazy, guys. I mean, people say it's April Fools, the first of April. But it's going to be no April Fools. You know, I, I'm looking forward to that. I mean, if, I, if as a fan of rugby, I'm looking forward to that kind of game, I can imagine what it means to you. Where does that rank just in terms of your early years as a coach at this level? Rob, I think it's, a, it's an exciting prospect. There was lots of talk about what does the move going north yeah. for, for South African rugby mean? And this is what it means. It means, you know, Racing Metro coming to South Africa with a Finn Russell you know, with a Gulf or whatever the the case is, yeah. you know, playing at Ellis Park, that, that's incredible. We, we'd never in our wildest dreams. I mean, we, we grew up on the staple diet of Super Rugby. You know, we we never thought we'd see Six Nation stars uh, um, play against our Springboks in an intercontinental competition. Yeah. So more than anything, what an experience! I mean, we had Start Francais here, the, the, the you know a couple of months ago in December, you know, and what an unreal experience that was for our, you know for our players and and for South African rugby as a whole. Aiming to place top eight? The the fight is there. I but think the, but the fight is huge though because European Champions Cup. I mean the Championship Cup is, is, is massive and that's literally what you need to do. I mean, no pressure. Look, Rob, I think the the, the everyone's fighting for it. Yeah. I mean, you know, by the stormers, you know, the sharks are, are fighting. You, we mentioned off air that, you know, the bulls are in a bit of a slump and they've got to work sure. themselves out of there. You know, our, our URC team is two on the trot, so we've got a bit of momentum. You know, hopefully we can go to Italy next week and do a thing there. So, you know, it's going to be a, re a real fight and, and the, and the business end of, of the round-robin phase is going to be quite interesting. Umziwa uh, Kengosi. Loosely translated as, this is his house. This is his home. Umziwa Kengosi. And he's the coach of the Lions Curry Cup team. Gracing us with his presence here. As I said, introductory interview. There's so much more to chat to this man about because he has a fascinating history. But I just wanted to wish you the best of luck, but also to congratulate you. This is a massive milestone. I think when you look back at trendsetters in rugby in SA, your name will be right up there. Thank you very much, Rob. I appreciate the opportunity to engage with you and engage with your listeners. Um, this is an incredible platform and, and, and long may you continue doing your, your, your work and doing your thing. Thanks so much. Room Dividers will be back. 
Marawa Sports Worldwide Live. In three, two, one. On 947, Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW.